On November the 1st, 2016, a blog post was published on the Ethereum website announcing a major change to the team. Gavin Wood, the company's chief architect and one of the most important programmers in crypto history, by the way, announced his departure. Gavin was building Ethereum alongside Vitalik Buterin from the very start, and it's fair to say that it was Gavin who took Vitalik's vision of Ethereum and made it a reality. It's going to blow everything else out of the water, quite honestly. But why did he decide to leave Ethereum so early, just before it skyrocketed in popularity in 2017, becoming the second biggest blockchain by market cap after Bitcoin? Well, by 2016, Gavin gained something more valuable, a vision for his own company. And it's that very company that seems to be disrupting the industry as we speak. We were just kind of thinking we could create the next version of Ethereum. Let's trace Gavin Woods' path from building Ethereum to creating a worthy container tender to Vitalik's conception with a rival blockchain, Polkadot, now often cited as the future layer zero of Web3. How we got to where we are today. So who is Gavin Wood? Why was he chosen to write Ethereum's code? Why has he left? What was his motivation here? And what makes him who he is, a genius coder who can turn philosophical constructions into really viable products? Well, as with any good story, this one starts in a bar, but this wasn't any ordinary bar. Gavin himself referred to this as a squat in central London. Indeed, here, Gavin met Mia Taki, a core developer at Bitcoin. Gavin and Mia Taki had a beer together in this amazing abandoned place with a view over the city of central London. You see our wireless? They're providing us with free Wi-Fi from the bank. And they discussed here the future of decentralization and the ultimate destruction of the current rotten financial system. Open source is also an example of how we can organize economically, an example for the future without needing masters and slaves. Sounds pretty romantic, right? Well, that evening, Niataki introduced Gavi to Johnny Bitcoin, a guy who presents himself as somewhat of an anonymous crypto trader. Well, then Gavi and Johnny became friends, and they ended up going for a beer every month or so. In December of 2013, it was Johnny who introduced Gavin to Vitalik Buterin. And Vitalik, by this time, had already published his Ethereum white paper, and Johnny forwarded it to Gavin. So, in December of 2013, Gavin got in touch with Vitalik, who had just popped out of university to write this paper. He offered to develop Ethereum in the C++ programming language. Vitalik wasn't really back then, um, you know, he wasn't really the guy that's going to code this up. Through the 18th and 19th of December, Gavin was at work coding it, and by mid-January 2014, he almost had a working prototype. Vitalik called Gavin up to meet in Miami to discuss a finish line to the project, and that was just before the North American Bitcoin conference in January of 2014, where Ethereum was due to be unveiled for the very first time. Here is where Ethereum comes in. As the first one to get an Ethereum testnet up and running, Gavin was offered a place at Ethereum's top table. He was the first person to meet in flesh each of the Ethereum co-founders, Vitalik Buterin, Anthony Delorio and Joseph Lubin, both Canadians, Charles Hoskinson, now the Cardano founder, and Mihai Elisi, the founder of the Bitcoin magazine. Now, only three of founders could code, Vitalik, Joseph, and of course, Gavin. None of them, except Gavin, had any actual experience in building project architecture from scratch. And also, none of co-founders are still part of Ethereum, by the way, but that's a different story. In March of 2014, the team went looking for funding around Silicon Valley. Despite organizing many meetings, two or three of them with key venture capitalist funds, they saw very low interest in their ideas. Still, there was a lot to be built in the product. From now on, they almost fully relied on their community and also crowdfunding. In April of 2014, Gavin published the Ethereum Yellow Paper, and this was a technical specification of Vitalik's white paper, and later proposed Ethereum's native programming language, Solidity, used for developing smart contracts on Ethereum and other blockchain platforms. In July of 2014, the team had an Ether pre-sale to raise $2.3 million. And by the end of 2014, by selling Ether, Ethereum had raised more than 18 million, and just a year later, on the 30th of July 2015, Frontier marked the official launch of the Ethereum platform, and Ethereum generated its first Genesis block. Ethereum is a planetary scale computer powered by blockchain technology. By this time, Gavin was on the road trying to force Ethereum into mass adoption and educating people on what the blockchain actually is. You can actually find numerous lectures by him explaining the tech for dummies at conferences, and this was kind of part of his job assignment to make Ethereum understandable and usable. But around late 2015, a big shift happened. 
Gavin started to turn away from Ethereum to found a separate company, ETHCorp. Why did he leave at this stage though? I mean, there was so much to be improved upon. Well, the truth is, Baterin says that his co-founders were always in it for the money. In the case of founding Ethereum, like probably the biggest divide definitely was that like a lot of these other people cared about making money, um, and uh, like for me, that was totally not my goal. And this maybe applies to Charles Hoskinson, who saw Ethereum as a for-profit and was kicked out of the project pretty early on. The, the reality is that we have very big philosophical disagreements about how things ought to be run. But did Wood really leave for the money? Maybe he chose independence and was simply following his own vision. Well, the truth is, we can have both. Gavin was a technologist, as he called himself. Constant improvements and disruptive new technologies drove his curiosity more than anything else. He wanted to move forward to build the next gen of the existing blockchain. He knew that Ethereum was imperfect. It had flaws. It was slow, not very environmentally friendly, and certainly not secure enough. Gavin clearly understood that in order to rebuild a system as big as Ethereum, it would take him years. So think about it. You're the CCO at Ethereum, and you know exactly how you would improve the system to progress its mass adoption. You're also fully aware that in order to fulfill your ideas, it would take years. And of course, you'd be limited to Vitalik's initial idea. Well, what would you choose? Um... It seems fairly logical here that Gavin chose to go his own way. So, we come to that farewell blog post that we talked about, where Gavin announced that he's leaving Ethereum for good. Right, um, any questions? But what was ETHCore? Well, it was an Ethereum development startup founded by Gavin Wood along with Ethereum's other core members. Together they managed to raise $750,000 in April of 2016. ETHCore was building an Ethereum client that was meant to evolve blockchain for enterprise use. Later, Gavin renamed this ETHCore to Parity, I guess to further separate himself from Ethereum. Parity's mission was to re-engineer and reimagine Web2 instruments on the blockchain to build Web3. Parity Technologies provide several tools and software that allow developers to launch their blockchains quickly and easily. I'm going to give you a demo of developing a custom blockchain and um, upgrading it online using this very computer. So let's see what I can do in 15 minutes. For instance, the Parity Substrate is a toolkit for building custom blockchains from the ground up, and it powers some of the most popular blockchains in the world right now, such as Polkadot, Kraken, and Chainlink. Perhaps around this time, Gavin truly saw that Ethereum was holding the industry down. People had been relying on it too much, and there were so many innovations that could have been made if only it was more scalable and accessible. Also, Wood saw that Ethereum had become just another network, competing for dominance in an increasingly crowded blockchain world. Ether maximalists were now emerging, following from the Bitcoin maximalists who didn't like Ethereum stepping into the space and reshaping it. Gavin, well, he was in strong opposition to both, and he had something on his mind to fight back, a rival blockchain. As a next-gen blockchain solution, there's no need to choose a single chain. You can build your own parachain on top of the existing system, and you won't have to write everything from scratch either. Here we arrive at Polkadot. Polkadot is a next-generation blockchain technology. The Polkadot white paper was published in the same year, summing up Wood's vision of the perfect chain. Built on proof-of-stake as opposed to Ethereum's proof-of-work, it was faster, more environmentally friendly, and safer than Ethereum. And it was also flexible, with hardly any preset limits. And lastly, the more parachains that were added to the system, the more resilient it would get. So Wood outgrew himself, and we can clearly see how he improves and builds upon all of these ideas that he had when he was creating Ethereum in the first place. And now, the question arises. Can this next-gen blockchain actually kill Ethereum? Will it become the layer zero of all Web3 infrastructure? But most importantly, was it the goal of Polkadot in the first place to overcome all of the older chains? Well, to answer these questions, let's take a closer look at the current metrics of both. So now into the detail. Polkadot has a market cap of $8 billion, and its transaction volume stands at $126 million, while Ethereum has a market cap of $186 billion and a transaction volume of $7 billion. So we can clearly see that the adoption of Ethereum goes far beyond Polkadot's, with Solana and Cardano in between. On the other hand, Polkadot is the second leading blockchain in terms of developers' share. It's currently boasting around 1,400 monthly active developers. This is still behind Ethereum, however, with 4 thousand plus monthly active developers. But these two were launched in different times. If we look into data normalized by launch date, of course, we can see the Polkadot skyrockets, even compared to Ethereum. So Polkadot has huge potential for future growth, and this could be due to the fact that developers just love it. But will this kill Ethereum?
you know, we can talk about it and we can, you know, write like science fiction novels about it, but like... Probably not, as these technologies are not interchangeable. The whole is Polkadot an Ethereum killer discussion is highly speculative. Ether and Polkadot are not really competitors, as they have entirely different use cases. And the only real reason for comparing them is that, well, every crypto project looks similar in the eyes of asset managers who are looking at the charts going up and down, right? Ether has an actual function as a platform to run smart contracts, while Polkadot is effectively an innovation testnet. Ethereum is great for building prototypes and deploying them quickly, but Polkadot is even better for more matured products that are proven and need to be scaled right now. Moreover, Polkadot doesn't function in and of itself, it's more of a blank page for others to draw upon. So if, or when, Apple decides to incorporate blockchain tech, it might use Polkadot, and that will totally change the landscape. For now, Polkadot is definitely a game changer, but it's not here to kill or replace Ethereum, rather to move Web3 adoption further down the line. And Gavin Wood is an absolutely brilliant and somewhat underestimated figure for the emerging Web3 space. He was the main man behind Ethereum's code. He came up with Solidity and a few other prominent things for builders. He proposed the concept of Web3 in the sense that we use it today. He founded Polkadot, a project that is seen to be the next big thing after Ethereum steps out of the limelight. He's a true disruptor and a philosopher with a rare ability to create working products out of abstraction. And his story will surely continue with new disruptive creations. And if you enjoyed this story, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. This way you'll learn more and gain inspiration from the top companies and founders in the crypto and Web3 space. Thanks for listening. I'm Gavin Wood, and I hope this talk has been enlightening. Vitalik, <laughs> Vitalik is impressed. Hey.